Did you know there's a really simple trick for creating extreme monster effects in Photoshop? For 20 years I made a full time living illustrating creatures just like this for clients worldwide. Now I'm a full time YouTube guy, I'm feeling pretty generous so I'm going to share some of my all time favourite monster tricks with you today. Be sure to stick with me to the end on this one guys as this vid is jam packed with a ton of crazy horror art techniques. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean, I'm a pro book cover artist from the UK and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. On this channel, we will take you beyond the Photoshop basics and into the world of advanced digital art. So for this piece, I really wanted to do a Buffy inspired composite and there you can see a very small uh, reference mood board that I wanted to bounce back to and refer to whilst doing this project. Now using these mood boards is quite typical in my workflow. You could see the figure there that I wanted to highlight and copy as it were. So even though it's not essential, I'm going to include a couple of the first steps that I went through to create the demo piece that you see here on screen. So to knock out those eyebrows is a really simple, easy trick. You just use the patch tool, which you can see highlighted on the toolbar to the left and you create a selection around the eyebrow and then drag it up to an area of the skin um, that doesn't have any details on it. So I just use the foreground, uh, the forehead elements. Next, another layer, sample of skin tone, and then go into the blending options, blend if, and tweak those sliders. You can hold down alt and tweak the sliders to get the effects that you want. I'm going through this fast because this isn't the main tutorial. We've done separate skin lightening tutorials um, quite a few times now, but I just wanted to include this because I know we'll get it in the comments. How did you do the skin? So if you wanted to go back and double check any of this stuff, just slow it down or pause it and you could see all of the settings used for blend if. So all of that skin processing, so that would have been the blend if layer, and the selective color was in a layer group and then that's selectively applied to the face to create the light skin tone. The eyes, very straightforward, create a selection around the irises and create a levels adjustment layer. Tweak the levels to brighten those eyes. It looks pretty scrappy there, but the idea is, is to put a new layer above that, set to color and then so I used um, a rich orange tone there and you can tidy that up using the layer mask there you can see on the layer stack the levels layer mask and then it's being tidied up with a soft edge brush like I said before this isn't the main meat of the tutorial what we really want to focus on today is creating these monster elements so the trick for creating extreme monster makeovers is to use existing stock assets of uh, prosthetic masks, uh, latex creature effects, and uh, special effects creatures. So I legally purchased this from Adobe Stock. This is from a stock provider on there called Sydney. His work's great, I use them all the time. And the basic premise is to take the elements that you need from different stock images so in this case I wanted those wrinkles above the eyes so create a selection use a layer mask and then with the blacks and whites selectively add and remove what you need for this demo here you can see I use the pen tool to create precise selections and then a large soft edge brush to taper away and blend um, that large soft edge brush, nothing fancy, that was just set to 100% flow and opacity. The next step is to get the elements that you brought in to match the base image. Now I was working quick and dirty here so I didn't convert that layer to a smart object or anything like that. I literally went straight into the camera raw filter did some basic tweaks to get the levels looking right and then use the texture clarity and detail sliders to take some of the contrast and the detail out of that stock element like i said i just did this stuff directly to the pixels so this is destructive editing if you want to work in a non-destructive manner 
convert that layer to a smart object before you go ahead and do the camera raw stuff. So I just talked over a bit there, but it was pretty straightforward to get that brow, um, the like, eyebrow ridge to match the light skin tone. Grabbed a sample of the skin tone, created a new layer above, set that to color and then painted over the top. When you add a clipping mask, so to add a clipping mask, alt and click between layers, any color that I apply above that will be constrained to the pixel data below. So even if the layer below has a layer mask, with the clipping mask, anything that you do on the layer above will be limited to the visible pixels below. I hope that makes sense. There's lots of good stuff out there about clipping masks. So that is the basic premise. You find high quality stock images of monster masks or creatures and then you take what you need so in this instance i just wanted uh, a more bold upper eyelid and i thought the brow from that guy would work really well so i use a pen tool position it go into camera raw do some processing direct to the pixels because i was working fast so i just wanted to get it all down and again i repeated that element over for the other upper eyelid to really give it that um, Vigo the Carpathian stare, like a Vigo from Ghostbusters 2. It's got a real uh, menacing scale. Aside from blending in elements, you can take other elements that have speculars or highlights or details. So they're those small white flecks that you see um, where the light is reflecting or if the surface is wet. And when you change that to a blend mode of overlay, it, it leaves the um, speculars and highlights in place. And you'll see that happening right here. It looks like um, delicate kind of moisture. And it makes the overall composite look really realistic and tactile. You don't see many guys on YouTube doing this, this style of artwork. So um, I'm really glad to be sharing this with you today. All the same principles that you've seen before is just repeated again and again. So I wanted that outer ridge of the deep eye sockets. Grab the section that I need, blend it in using the um, layer mask. Tweak the colors using that color trick. Go straight into camera raw. Remove some of the details with the clarity, texture and detail sliders. And there you can see you can get the elements to really match i repeated that brow again now on our videos we always like to keep in the mistakes don't listen to the youtube guys they lie you don't always do perfect artwork in one go be it for commercial work or personal so even though you've just watched me put together that eyebrow there the, the ridge i actually ditched that and you'll see in a moment what i replaced it with Another good thing you can do is dodge and burn on top of the kind of details. So the ridge of the brow wasn't really um, bright enough and that would naturally catch the light because it's raised and more prominent. So you can use a simple dodge and burn process. In this case, I use the Clinton Lofthouse me method. I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's basically using curves and then setting the curves to luminosity and selectively lightening and darkening with a soft edge brush so here we go uh, this is what i was telling you about earlier about me not liking the original brow and switching it out with something uh, a bit more prominent and a bit more like the buffy reference images that i showed you earlier now i mentioned the dodge and burn and here you can really see it in action now i don't profess to being a dodge and burn expert because i've only just started using it in my own workflow but in this instance i wanted to highlight and accentuate um, some of these ridges so the darks i use a soft edge brush uh, with a low flow to get those dark areas and then on the dodge adjustment layer i picked out some of the lighter details and you'll see me zoom in in a moment and really add some details to those small subtle wrinkles underneath the um, lower eyelids so 
So th this is uh, quite a new area for me personally, and it really does add something. It adds a, a bit more contrast, power and drama to an overall image. So we're getting to the final stretch here, guys. Here you see those little accents being picked up with a dodge and burn. And then for this final bit, just to round things off, I wanted to show you uh, a whistle stop tour through some of the post processing I did to unify this piece. Now this isn't a post processing tutorial, so I'm not gonna go in depth on what I did, but it was basically a selective color, Nick collection plugin, and a little bit of digital overpaint, which is another thing I'm personally learning myself. So I'm trying to incorporate it wherever we can. So that's a wrap for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed this short but sweet walkthrough. And if you enjoyed this one, be sure to check out the end cards coming up because we've got lots more. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I hope to see you at the next video. Catch you then.